Yeah, it is hard. So, sorry about that. You know, we need more folks to come out and help us finish our new building so we can uh, get in there and uh, spread out and be a little cooler here in our worship time. So, but uh, this morning, everyone, I just want to welcome you. Thank you guys for being here this morning at the Fellowship Church. Um, we're excited about what God's doing, and uh, we're starting a brand new series today. It's called It's Personal. Um, you know, it, it, what we want to do is we want to connect with Jesus. And so for the next four weeks, we're going to be looking at a few places in, uh, in Scripture where we're going to be uh, trying to... Uh, connect closer to Jesus. We're going to be looking at some of the words of Jesus. And so, uh, you know, uh, when you read your Bibles, a lot of Bibles, are, you know, the red letters. So we're going to be looking at some actual words of Jesus. And we're, what we're going to be looking at are some I am statements. Uh, four of them, obviously, I guess four different weeks. But uh, some of his most challenging statements uh, and um, how we can personalize those into our lives and uh, really connect, understand who Jesus is a little better. And this morning, uh, we're going to be uh, looking at uh, John chapter 14, and we're going to be looking at this passage uh, where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But before we get into this this morning, I want us to begin with a pop quiz. Yeah, well, school's back, right? I mean, we started school, so uh, it's time for a pop quiz, isn't it? Good. Let's do a pop quiz. Yeah, all right. Uh, so what, what we're going to do this morning is just to have a little bit of fun as we kind of get into the text and start talking. Is I want us to uh, talk about a few things uh, uh, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a few words, uh, sayings, quotes, if you will. And we're going to see who said it. See who can identify who said it, okay? And the first thing we want to ask is, is this something Jesus said? Or did somebody else say it? And if somebody else said it, what did they say? And we can play this all day because there's so many different things that people say. They think it's in the Bible, uh, you know, or they think Jesus said it. A lot of times it's not. But I just want to throw up a few of them and see how you guys do, all right? So... So number one, did Jesus say it or someone else? Let's see how you do. All right, number one, God helps those who help themselves. Did Jesus say that? No, no, no. no. That's pretty solid. Anybody, anybody think Jesus said that? Who said it? Somebody else. You're right. You win. <laughs> this guy said it. Y'all know him? Benjamin Franklin, that's right. Benjamin Franklin said that. He said, God helps those who help themselves. Did you know that in a poll that 84% of Americans believe that Jesus said that? But thankfully here in the South, we're a lot smarter. We, we know better than that. All right, number two. Let's look at this one. I thirst. I've said that. I, you know, but, <laughs> but no, yeah, that's, that's a saying of Jesus, isn't it? That's one of the famous sayings of Jesus on the cross. And if you look in John 19 and 28, uh, we see um, Jesus, when he was on the cross, he said, I thirst. You know, he, his body had been through an anguishing night of torment. And, um, you know, he was bearing the weight of the sin on, of the world upon him. Jesus paid it all. When we were singing that a while ago, I was thinking about my sins. And he was bearing the punishment for my sins. Think about that. You ever get thirsty? In the way to things, Jesus said, I thirst. So, proves his humanity, doesn't it? He was 100% man. It wasn't just some spirit on that cross. It was a man on that cross. The perfect man of God. All right, so number three. Let's look at this one. A little bit more challenging maybe, but it's more blessed to give than to receive. How many of us practice that? But who said it? That's the thing, right? Who said that? Anybody know? How many of you think, let's do this, how many of you think Jesus said that? Okay, raise your hand if you think Jesus said that. Okay, small minority. Now, what if I tell you it's in the Bible? How many of you would think Jesus said it then? Okay, less of you? <laughs> it's in the book of Acts. So, how does that affect you? Does Jesus say it in the book of Acts? Oh, you're wrong, he did. All right, let's, uh, let's look. Uh, Jesus said it in Acts chapter 28 in your Bible. If you want to, this is a copy of Somebody's scripture, you can see it's red right there. And so they're quoting Jesus here. You know, and this is one of those passages, it's not in the Gospels. And so we don't know when Jesus said it, but Dr. Luke says, remember the words of Jesus. He said it's more blessed to give than to receive. I knew I'd get y'all on that one. All right. So, so I know that one's a tough one. But but Jesus actually said that. So all right, well, uh, a couple more. Number four, um, 
Oh, wait a minute. I guess I've forgotten. Did I not have the blanks? Blank one? Oh, I, we already give that one out. Did we? Oh, everybody knows it anyway. Now, just do it. Who said that? <laughs> Nike. That's right. And so we're about to enter football season. So volunteers, you know, let's get it. We got Nike as our, our sponsor this year. Let's just do it. All right. But Nike said that, right? But that's what Jesus should have said at the end of the Great Commission, shouldn't he? When he got done, he said, go into all the nation, you know, and teach them everything, baptizing them, you know, that whole thing. And then he should have just said, just do it. Right? <laughs> That's right. Brick by brick. <laughs> yeah, brick by brick. Let's just do it. All right. One more. One more. Uh, and I've already given, given you the answer to this. Let's see who's paying attention. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Who said this? Jesus, Jesus said that, didn't he? He said that, obviously. So, uh, did I have it? Yeah, there we go. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You think that riled a few people up today if uh, he said that in the public square? <laughs> yeah, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can go to God except through me. Not very politically correct, is it? Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, so Jesus made a few of these I am statements, and and, you know, these I am statements, they're all pretty powerful and they're pretty deep theologically when you really start thinking about them. But, but uh, you know, Jesus said, if you really want to know who I really am, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you. You know, he says, I am the way. And, you know, you could phrase it like this. I am the truth and I am the life. And um, so that's what we're going to look at today. These, these three things that Jesus said he was. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And that is really one of the most striking and controversial statements maybe that Jesus made. Because, you know, today it's popular to think, you know, it doesn't matter what you believe. As long as you believe in God, as long as you're good, you're going to be okay. Because that's what Satan wants us to believe. That's what he wants us to believe. You know, and it's popular. If you want to get patted on your back, if you want to be in a good social club, you know, you have to learn what to believe. But, but, if you, but what about the truth? Do you want to know the truth? Because Jesus said he is the truth, right? And he's revealing the, the truth to us. And, and it doesn't matter what people believe. The truth is the truth whether you believe it or not, isn't it? You know, you don't have to believe it for it to be true. And so, but... Uh, Let's give a little bit of context for this passage. You know, Jesus has been with his disciples. He's really wrapping up the end of his three and a half year ministry with the disciples. It's Passion Week. That means it's that last week, really probably the last few hours of his life. You know, he knows he's approaching the, the Calvary's cross. And so he's trying to uh, get the disciples to understand, look guys, you know, I'm about to get arrested. I'm going to go through this trial. I'm going to be beaten. I'm going to be crucified. And he's even trying to help them to understand that he's going to, uh, you know, die and be raised again and, and these kind of things. And, you know, they, they weren't getting it too good. But, but he's trying to help them through that time because they're getting ready to come upon it. And he's just giving them all this stuff at the last minute. That's, really, when you read through the Gospel of John, that's what most of it is. It's, he's just trying to prepare them for this moment and what's going to happen. And so he gets down into uh, chapter 14 and, and, and you know, he's, he's really trying to personalize his teaching. And he says, look, I want you to really know who I am. I want you to really believe in me. It's important that you understand the truth. And so, you know, and as he taught him, you know, you know, you remember in that night, we're going to observe communion here in a little bit, but on that night in that upper room, you know, he told, he told them that, you know, that night one of them was going to betray him and all this. And you remember Peter. Peter says, well, not me. You know, I never, never, never deny you, you know. And, but Jesus said, you know what, Peter, before this night's over, you're going to deny me three times. You know, before the rooster crows in the morning, you're going to deny me three times. And so we find out with that statement, it's true for us, and we need to really understand this, is that, look folks, we can't even make it through one night without Jesus. We need Him so desperately. And so, we need not just to know about Him, we need to know Him personally. We need to know Him intimately. We need to know Him deeply. And so when we look at this passage, 
Now Jesus knows all that they're about to go through, all He's about to go through, and He's trying to get that into their heads. And look what He says. The first thing He says in chapter 14, He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. You know? Don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't that show them? That reveals to us the compassion of Jesus, doesn't it? He's worried about how they're going to feel, how they're going to be treated. He's worried about their feelings. He's getting ready to bear the sin of the whole world. <laughs> he knows the flogging's coming. But he says, look guys, I'm